It's been seven long years in between Rainbow Six releases and fans of the series have been salivating over Siege for some time. The strategic FPS shooter is polarizing. Its slower paced tactical gameplay is so different to the run of the mill COD style shooter that some people hate it, but a very devoted fan base simply love it. This is what makes it special. In similar fashion to the also recently released Star Wars Battlefront game, Siege foregoes a single player campaign and instead focuses on team based multiplayer action. You do, however, get a series of training missions or situations to tackle alone, and gamers will be very pleased to see the return of the popular cooperative Terrorist Hunt missions. Rainbow Six Siege has been built on the Anvil Next 2.0 game engine, the same engine used by the recently released Assassin's Creed Syndicate, so visually we're hoping for an impressive looking game. Developer Ubisoft promises that PC gamers will enjoy enhanced graphics, and Nvidia is quick to point out that this is due to their involvement with advanced GameWorks effects. Thankfully, Rainbow Six Siege doesn't appear to be too heavily infected with game works, and the user is free to pick and choose which setting they use without facing a significant impact on performance or image quality. Take the ambient occlusion options for example. Rainbow Six Siege features Nvidia's HBAO Plus as well as Ubisoft's own SSBC. SSBC was first showcased in Far Cry 4 and is an ambient occlusion technique that utilizes up to 12 samples, 8 of which are being used in Rainbow Six Siege. This method is said to be a significant improvement over SSAO, which has been used by Ubisoft in the past. Alternatively, gamers can offer HBAO Plus, which Nvidia says delivers superior image quality, particularly over long distances. Personally, I prefer the look of HBAO Plus, but I wouldn't say it's outright superior to SSBC, so I recommend you play around with both if you're super picky about the image quality. There are a number of post-process anti-aliasing and multi-sample anti-aliasing options to choose from as well. For testing, we've decided to use Temporal Anti-Aliasing, or TAA for short, with Temporal Filtering. Nvidia's HBO Plus has also been enabled, while all other quality settings have been maxed out. Something we really like about Rainbow Six Siege is the built-in benchmark. It's quick and easy to run and allows gamers to quickly work out which settings work best on their system. It also makes it easy to compare your results with my own. The average of three runs were taken for each card at each resolution, and here's a look at the built-in benchmark before we jump to the results. Lower end card owners will be pleased to see that they can run Rainbow Six Siege at maximum quality and still get a minimum well over 30 FPS and an average of 56 frames per second or higher. It's interesting to see the 4GB R9 380 outperform its 2GB equivalent by more than 10%. This is the biggest margin we've seen between the two cards in any game while delivering actual playable performance. From the GTX 970 and up, if you have a 1080p screen, then you'll be probably wanting to enable MSAA for a more accurate image. That said, if you're rocking a high refresh screen, then the 100 FPS plus average frame rate will be welcomed. At 1440p, most gamers won't be satisfied with anything less than a GTX 970, which was able to produce a minimum of 38 FPS and an average of 62 FPS. A tolerant gamer might push for 1440p with the 380x, but anything below that and you're in console town. It was surprising to see both the R9 Fury and R9 Fury X outperforming the 980 Ti, especially as Siege is an Nvidia sponsored title. It's interesting to see such a large delta between the minimum and average frame rates in the built-in benchmark. This isn't something we saw when playing Rainbow Six Siege. The averages are similar to what we saw, but the frame rates never dipped to the lows that we saw in the benchmark. That said, I'm yet to play every possible scenario. 
Playing any game with a minimum below 30 FPS is tough in my opinion, so at 4K I would really only consider the game possibly playable with the four cards at the top of our graph. The 390X was the overperformer here with a minimum of 29 FPS, rendering it one frame ahead of the 980 Ti and only falling four frames shy in terms of average, although at around the 40 FPS mark these are important frames per second. The R9 Fury and Fury X were the only cards able to get their minimums above 30. Rainbow Six Siege performs really well on current generation cards, right from the bottom up when you're playing at 1080p. The visuals won't blow you away like a heckler in Coke M320, but it's still a pretty good looking game that keeps the classic Rainbow Six look and feel. The good news is the game plays extremely well on mid-range to low-end hardware, and those playing at 1080p will find the R9 380 and GTX 960 more than sufficient. Moreover, unlike recently tested games such as Just Cause 3 and Fallout 4, the CPU doesn't play a critical role and those rocking a Core i5 or i7 processor will receive similar performance to those using an FX series processor. Finally, a big shout out to Ubisoft for making all DLC free. Take note other publishers that may or may not begin with E and end in A, this is how it's done. Now that I'm done testing, I'm excited to dive in and hunt some terrorists. On me. Thanks for watching another Hardware Unboxed Game Performance Review. If you have any questions at all, then please hit us up in the comments or in our forum at hardwareunboxed.com. Don't forget to hit like and hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Yeah.